My name is Benson Hong. I'm part of the user experience research team um, for Mission Control Technologies. Mission Control Technologies uh, is a software that we're hoping to incorporate into Mission Control right now in Johnson Space Center. We're building software for mission control operations on the ground to control space station and other spacecraft. We had some very specific needs for someone who was still a student, but we also were looking for someone who could do designing so that the STI seemed like a, a very good resource to help us find that uh, difficult to find person. Benson seems to have done uh, quite well to fit the bill. I worked on some screencasts this summer which were tutorial videos for this for the customers down at JSC. They're basically you know, quick start guides on how to run our software with just minimal, minimal basic training. The Benson has been invaluable to us. The screencasts that he's created absolutely had to be done and we absolutely did not have time to do them. I was given a task to complete these uh, screencasts. I felt really confident and um, appreciated you know, the team really having the confidence in me to complete the task. One of the challenges in having student interns is if you have to put a huge amount of time into them, then it doesn't actually help your project, unfortunately. We really treat him as more of a junior peer than a student. The greatest accomplishment I, I feel that I had this summer was creating a, a product to hand to actual uh, NASA, NASA folks. It's a great opportunity, um, I think a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to intern here at NASA. I'm Teresa Jacobson. I'm building a model to try and predict flight delays. As the air traffic control system gets larger, the projection is that in the next 20 years it's going to triple. The sheer scale of the problem is going to go up and we're going to start running into increasingly large problems with delays. So we're looking at how, how the system functions now and we're also looking at how it may function in the future. And so that's really what we're trying to get at is come up with a way of finding out where the worst bottlenecks are. The need for a statistician uh, for, for what Teresa was doing was related to uh, predicting sort of future delays in this air transportation system. What I do isn't as important right now, but what I do is going to inform things like if we, if we had $5 million to throw at the problem, where do we throw it at the problem? I'm really trying to use what she knows from her school and, and kind of apply it to problems that, that I have. And so I think that was really valuable to have her experience and statistics to, to apply to a problem that I've been thinking about for a while but haven't necessarily had as much time as I would like to work on that problem. I think that there was some, some good, important research that was accomplished. It's nice to have uh, students that that are really capable of, of accomplishing their own tasks. I think the biggest success from my perspective is that for the first time, I'm really in some sense on my own. I feel like I've really, for the first time in my life, been a working statistician. I'm Andrew Lone. The area of NASA research I'm involved in is nanotechnology. I'm working for energy solutions using nanotechnology. This summer I've been working on growing nanowires for thermoelectric characterization and ge power generation. It's pretty much like a cooking. You have these uh, various materials that you can play with. Basically, you, you, uh, you are self-guided uh, by your uh, uh, intuitive uh, intuition. My mentor's research is in designing and fabricating energy conversion devices based on nanotechnology. Materials that I make are going to, to form the foundations of the devices that he fabricates. We are on the verge of losing our foundation of using oil as a, as a primary source of energy. So developing new types of devices that can convert heat and light into electric power uh, is really something that we have to do with the you know, high level of urgency. NASA has interest in thermoelectric generation for a couple reasons. We can get energy or supply heat without the need for moving parts. One of the cool things that I've experienced this summer 
is writing papers that are a collaboration of both the UC Santa Cruz side and the NASA side. I've been working recently on a paper with Dr. Maya Mayapan, who's the director of nanotechnology here at NASA, and being able to write a paper with my group and with, with his supervision has been very beneficial. Mm -hmm.